Hey guys, before we get started, if you like the content you're seeing, please give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. I'm by myself today. That's oddly relaxing. I'm gonna tinker around on the strip till bar a little bit. I know there's a couple bearings out on a couple of the uh, row cleaners, so take those apart. And then we'll see if anybody else is back by then. I don't know what else we might get into. Close the door for all the heat gets out. It's actually kind of chilly. And this shop takes forever to warm up. So we try not to open that door anymore than we have to. Since we're gonna be unbolting some stuff, figured I'd grab the new impact from the office because it really wasn't doing much good there. The main reason I bought this orange toolbox last year was so I could roll it to projects. And we wouldn't have to make 45 trips back to the main toolbox. And there's just crap all over the place in front of it. <sighs> I think it's just dad's nature to put stuff everywhere. I give him a lot of crap, but truth be told, I'm pretty much the same way. The shop's just too small and there's too much stuff in it, so constantly happen to shuffle things around. Speaking of shops, if you guys wanna see an awesome shop, you should really check out Larson Farms. Wow, that's some serious shop goals right there. Anybody need a shallow, Cobalt half inch stripe socket set metric. Screwed up, bought two metrics and no standards. Supplemental heat. Like a spray note WD 40, loosened up a little bit. Look at all that water. All that water was in this tube right here. And when we unfolded this thing, it all came running out. Made Brother BJ have to go to the bathroom. Now a few people in the last video asked why we're not going to run anhydrous ammonia or NH3 through the strip till bar. That's how we used to strip till. At that particular point in time, there was a co-op in town that had an anhydrous tank. When they went out of business, dad didn't really want to go through the liability of having a tank on site. Um, you know, there's always people breaking into them and whatnot. In fact, we've still got a couple old anhydrous tanks we don't use for anything. They're just leftovers from, I don't know, what, 15 years ago now? 10 years ago, something like that. Every year, we always find something like this apparatus around one of them anhydrous tanks. If you don't know, anhydrous ammonia is apparently a key ingredient in meth, at least around here. So meth heads will try to break into your anhydrous tank, get that stuff, jug it, Take it to their meth lab, which is extremely dangerous. Anhydrous ammonia is something that it can really mess you up. Like if you get it on you, it's a gas. It is super cold. It'll freeze burn you. So the fact that they were using this to get anhydrous ammonia out of a tank is kind of sketchy. But you know they're drug addicts. So, any of you guys got any fun stories about meth heads and your anhydrous tanks? I'm sure there's some good ones out there. I don't know if we got any goodies with this thing. Nope. Oh, we got a little bit of topsoil. Now I should clarify, in the last video, a lot of people asked if we're, when we fixed the sprayer's cracked frame. The sprayer didn't have the cracked frame. This unit has uh, some cracks in it. Like I was talking about at the end of that video, the carriage itself, it's not super heavy and it's been welded, it's re-cracked a few times. So that's what I was talking about when I said cracked frame. But dad's gonna be here in a little bit. So I'm waiting on him. He's gonna help me take that off there. I'm gonna try to clean that cart out. Like I said, baby steps, folks. I just want that cart put all of our batteries in and make a charging station. That's it. The real fun part about cleaning stuff out is what kind of buried treasure we're gonna find. There's a broken door handle. Good stuff. Mm. Tow lights. Looks like an oil filter to something. Should probably put that in the oil filter storage. On a side note, at least we can get started for Christmas decorating. That's better. You know it's gonna be a good day when you guess the right wrench on the first try. I don't think this is that, I think it was just loose. I think, I think the bolt that holds on there was just loose, so clean it up a little bit. <laughs> 
I'll have to get it off here and try and find out. Once again, first try. I clearly have the wrong tool for the job. Just clean this up a little bit. But I'm about 99% sure that this bearing is fine. Doesn't look to be out. So spins spins kind of stiff, but I think some new grease will help that a lot. One thing I'm definitely gonna do before we put it back together is make sure this grease circuit is working. And if it's not, we'll replace it to try to fix it. Oh, we're getting grease out. There's where the grease circ lets the grease in to the to the grease bank or whatever you want to call it. And as you can see when I squeeze the trigger, pushing that grease in. So that's good. So we are ready to put this thing back together. And when you put this back together, you gotta make sure you get your grease zerk right there, lined up with the slot for the grease to come in. It'd be a real pain in the butt if you were trying to grease it and that wasn't there, you'd never get any grease in. Alright, perfect. It's ready to go back on. I think I'm just going to go through all these row cleaners and do that. That grease that's in there is old. Wouldn't hurt to be cleaned out. Probably don't need to, but it definitely wouldn't hurt. And since I'm going to be the one running this jewel, I want as little problems as possible because I'm sure we're going to have some. Wouldn't you know, we get a new planter and BJ gets to run its first year here. I didn't think that one through too well when I volunteered for strip tilling. But I always knew I was destined to be a stripper. Try to get that image out of your head. It's one my wife struggles with. So since we're gonna do all these, I'm just gonna take off the right side and then we'll put them both back on at the same time. One down, 23 to go. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing with this one. Take it apart, clean it up. Clean up the threads on this uh, on the bolt for it. Um, yeah, then we'll re-grease it and put it back on. All right, we got one set of row cleaners re-greased, cleaned up, ready to go. While I'm here, I'm gonna grease the opener, which is this large Kohler right here. This basically opens up a trench for this knife. Oh, that didn't look good. But I'm gonna go ahead and grease that. That way, basically, oh, I'll just grease these back ones too. Then everything on this unit will be greased up and ready to go. Now, I could take these all apart and clean them out, but um, I'm just gonna be lazy, to be honest with you. Turns pretty free. Out of grease. Need those. Well, that was pretty slick. Sunday, it's three o'clock, I'm having eight lunch, so I'm gonna go smoke some wings. Living that Traeger life. Back from the house for a little while, food's still cooking, so hi guys. Got some helpers with me. While the food's cooking though, I'm gonna try it. Why don't you be with a pocket yep. knife? Yep, Dak's got a training pocket knife. He's super stoked. But, anyways, while the food's cooking, uh, I'm gonna finish up for the night. It is Sunday, so probably not gonna do a whole lot more. And then we'll probably pick us up tomorrow. Man, this one wasn't gonna be long. Absolutely no grease in there. Let me see that. not bad, yep. Let me see. Maybe you sweeping? Yeah. Good job. How much you got? Show us what you got. Show us your dirt pile. Right there. Very good job. I'm training them. There's Pappy. What? Other than greasing this stuff, just kind of inspecting it like this. This wheel here, it's got twine wrapped around it. Need to get that off there before it could potentially mess one of them bearings up. It's not spinning very free, so looking for stuff like that. Hey, we gotta do something like that. What? Oh. Well, the stops don't work because it was bent. Hold on. That's kind of a P4 sitting situation. In the, last, in the last video, a few people asked when we use this bar. We're probably going to, this year for sure, doing going to do a spring pre-planting application. This is how we're going to put in some of our liquid nitrogen, not all of it. But you could also use this in the fall. Someone asked if you do this after you planted your crops. Now, this idea of strip tills, you want to cut that strip, put your fertilizer in there with it, and then plant on top of that strip. So you really can't do it pre-plant 
You could use a bar like this post plant, but for a side dress application and it wouldn't have near as much stuff on it, you'd basically just have a Kohler, Coulter cutting a trench in the ground and putting 28. So you wouldn't really use this post plant, just pre plant. All right, my chicken's done, so I'm going home and eating dinner. And we'll finish, won't finish, we'll continue working on this thing tomorrow. Morning. Got a little side project this morning before we get back to the shop. Dad had to run over to the bank and I don't know what my brother's doing, but they should be back here in a little bit. This tractor didn't come with carpet. It's gonna leave it that way, but I actually seen this on Instagram. Someone took one of these rugs that have like, you know, an outline of a town and roads and stuff and put it in a tractor. And I was like, you know, my kids drive with me all the time. Sounds like a great idea. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Son just happened to have two of these. So now he's got one in the tractor. There it is. And there you have it. Most expensive playpen you'll ever see. Now that's that's pretty neat. I'm glad I seen that because we were just probably gonna throw that rug away. So now maybe the kids can get some enjoyment out of it. Well while we're over here, better check this leg pit, see if this see if this pump's doing its job. Nope. Oh. Well that's disgusting. That water smells terrible. God, that stinks. Hopefully we can just... Oh, there is no cap. Oh, there's the cap. Cap just wasn't on it. All right. What in the world is this apparatus? What have we got going on here, Dad? I'm not sure I understand his logic here. There's probably a reason for this. I just don't understand it. didn't come out. Yeah, that'll work. Well, that smelled awful. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why the new leg is above ground. All right, just getting back out to the shop. Dad just got here. Kind of looking over this bar some. Like I said in the last video, this bar is meant to where it could either be a three-point mounted bar, which should be the three arms on the back of the tractor that raise up and down, or you could have a tongue on it like this one has. And in the last video when I said this frame had some issues, for example, this fold cylinder right here, if you look at it, it's got a bend in it right there. That bend is from where this cracked or the bolts broke, the back carriage, this slid forward into the cylinder so right now we're looking at what it would take to take this back to a three-point mounted implement. If we did that, this cylinder would move back to here, which looks like where it's supposed to be. So there's another mounting point for it right there. But I don't know how we would pull our 28 tank. Like I said, we're going to be pulling well, a... that's not a problem. We could make a... We'll just make a tongue come off the back. Or something. Yeah. Wouldn't yeah. it have to go up and down, though, with a three-point? Yeah, it could. Somewhere. I don't know. That's why I want to see down at the show. We'll talk yeah. about it. This is stuff like this is why we enjoy going to the farm show. Like I said, we're going to be at the farm show in Louisville, Kentucky this week. Yeah, I guess it is this week. It's in two days. But stuff like that's why we like going down there, get ideas, talk to, like, well, I'm sure we'll talk to Yetter. I'm sure we'll talk to Unferfirth about rolling baskets, stuff like that. We can put on this bar and different ideas for how, how to set it up and make it work better. Definitely need to talk to someone about these row cleaners. They wanted to add rolling baskets back here, kind of like the, our zone builder has, the ripper. But, once again, this carriage is kind of in the way for four of the 12 units. I don't know where you'd put it right here. And I don't know where you'd put it right here. We'd really like to have a basket on the back, especially with us doing this in the spring. But I don't know how. This is the cleaner that gave me fits yesterday. Dad got me some spare bolts. So put it back together, grease it up, get it on the bar, and continue. Now we usually have bolts, but we don't have any carriage bolts in the bolt bin. We do have a bolt bin, no carriage bolts. Definitely need a cheater bar. 
seemed like this was our cheater bar storage. No idea. This should work. Now while we're under here, I want to show you something that's kind of a problem with this row, row cleaner system. It's kind of got us worried. Now see, the idea of row cleaners, which is these things in the front with these shark, tooth, shark teeth on them, that's what they call those. The idea of those is to move the trash or the crop residue out of the way so that this can penetrate the ground real well to make a slit for that shank back there so that we can inject our fertilizer. Well, the problem is you want these row cleaners, oh look at that, nice and smooth. You want these just barely touching the ground, like they should just be moving every now and again. You don't want them digging in, like you don't want your teeth polished all the way. If that's the case, you're moving too much dirt. Use this system right here to control the depth. Basically right with this, you're setting a stop right there which can be adjusted for depth with this knob. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be doing its job because I can just, I can make it go all the way to the ground, which is not good. So I don't know if we're gonna have to replace this piece here or if the row cleaners themselves just all are wore out, I don't know. See, when I move this up a hole, this, this whole assembly right here moves me. See, that's the stop right there. And looky there, we just went, just went right past it. So now it's all the way down. It's supposed to be right there, but there it is all the way down. That's not good. But anyways, I'm gonna get back to tearing these things apart and reassemble them. Fun, fun, fun. You're gonna have to up your toddler game. And I saw, I saw. Uh, so dad and beads are out here now. We're getting everything greased up. Just kind of, I think dad's making a bar right now just to go in here and move these units up and down, make sure everything's free and flexing like it's supposed to. I love the smell of PB Blaster in the morning. It's called PB Blaster. It's made out of peanut butter juice. Whoa. Yikes. Nope, it's moving. Jeff, what are you making? I'm gonna make a rack, put this wood or it's a metal one. Oh, okay. Baby steps. Just look at the level of precision BJ's got going on here. Yeah, you're doing it wrong. What do you guys listen to in the shop for entertainment? Now, the main reason I listen to a podcast right now is I don't have to turn it off film unless Zach sends me a copyright notice. Can't really listen to the radio without getting in trouble. Get in YouTube jail. DJ's, what'd you say, peanut butter and jelly in there? Peanut butter and jelly juice. Peanut butter and jelly juice. BJ's peanut butter and jelly juice in the bar. Really trying to get all these bolts to free up. All these, uh, like these closing wheels, they're all adjusted by loosening and tightening bolts and moving slots. So that's something we'll have to play with once we get us some dry days. Stick this thing in the dirt and see what the best settings work for us. All right, one last row opener. And I did quit going through them all. I just started greasing them all about halfway through, just taking forever. But this was the very last one. Wouldn't take grease. I'm going to take it apart. Ended up been taking grease, but it had plenty of grease in it. Wiping this old grease out, it's a lot like uh, wiping really bad diarrhea. So we've been working on this thing now for two or three days. And yeah, after, long days too. 12 hour days, they do. Yeah, ha ha ha. I think now that we got one unit that doesn't have row cleaners and is also missing a grease circle. We've got to plug it in, or plug, we've got to push in a grease circle on it. And that's pretty much it. Other thing, everything else seems to be freed up, seems to be turning okay. Can you think of anything else we gotta do to it? Well, I mean, to do to it, yeah. yeah, but I mean, anything like as far as the individual units themselves, just well, those opener treat, stops. We gotta get them bro cleaners. The stops on them is kind of. I a, don't know what we're gonna have to do there. Make different stops or what? They ain't worth the crap where they are. Yeah. And then after that, we gotta make sure that this thing will be able to pull a 1600 gallon wagon like we're planning on. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna have to beef up the frame. Uh, I don't know yet. All right, guys, that's it. That's it for this video. Uh, next video will be coming to you from Louisville, Kentucky. Speaking of that, the upload schedule is a little off this week. This video is going to come out on Tuesday instead of Monday. And the next video will come out Thursday instead of Wednesday. That's because of the show. But hope to see some of you down there. Like I said before, I will be at the Unverfurth booth Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 11 to 12. So come on out and say hi. But hope to see some of you down there. Like I said before, I will be at the Unverfurth booth 
Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 11 to 12. So come on out and say hi.